WLC announces a new understanding of Scripture, a new perspective on truth, a beautiful new view of Yahweh's love. Eternal fire exists. Multitudes have lived and died in terror of spending an eternity suffering in the fires of hell for the sins committed during a single life on earth. Others, WLC included, have denied the existence of eternally burning fires, stating that once sin and sinners are consumed, the fires will go out. The truth is shocking. It reveals both positions contain some truth, and both are in error. Isaiah presents the fate of sinners and asks an important question. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness hath surprised the hypocrites. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? The very next verses contain the shocking answer. He who walks righteously and speaks uprightly, he who despises the gain of oppressions, who gestures with his hands, refusing bribes, who stops his ears from the hearing of bloodshed and shuts his eyes from seeing evil. He will dwell on high. His place of defense will be the fortress of rocks. Bread will be given him. His water will be sure. Your eyes will see the king in his beauty. They will see the land that is very far off. It is not sinners who will dwell forever in eternal flames. It is the righteous. They will live and rejoice forever in the everlasting fires of Yahweh's presence. Only a holy people can live with a holy El, for our El is a consuming fire. Yahweh is the source of all life. In Him we live and move and have our being. Pure energy flows from Him in an uninterrupted torrent. In Scripture, the appearance of this holy source of light and life and energy is described as fire. Before His fall, Lucifer was the covering cherub the ceaseless beams of light and energy flowing from the Creator bathe him in the perpetual light of sunless day. As the covering cherub, Lucifer dwelt in the eternal fires of the Omnipotent's immediate presence. He walked unscathed in its flames. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of El. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. In vision, the prophet Daniel was honored with a glimpse into the heavenly throne room where the glory streaming from Yahweh looked like a river of fire. I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. 
thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. When Yahweh came down to Mount Sinai for the proclamation of his law, he came in such brilliant fire, it appeared to the onlooking multitudes as though the entire mountain were on fire. Now Mount Sinai was completely in smoke because Yahweh descended upon it in fire. Its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace and the whole mountain quaked greatly. Since Yahweh himself is a consuming fire, the closer one gets to him, the closer he comes to the eternal burnings. Having spent 40 days in the Divine Presence on Mount Sinai, Moses' face reflected the amazing glory he had beheld. Now it was so when Moses came down from Mount Sinai that Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. So when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. Then Moses called to them, and he put a veil on his face. The very presence of Yahweh is eternal fire in which only the righteous and holy can survive. Wherever a sin exists in the presence of Yahweh, the eternally burning fires of a holy El consumes. People with unsanctified hearts are terrified in the presence of eternal burnings of holiness. When Yahweh spoke from Mount Sinai, the people were panic-stricken, and all the people saw the thunderings, and the lightnings, and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear, but let not Elohim speak with us, lest we die. If they choose to cling to sin, Yahweh's fire consumes both sin and sinners. This is graphically demonstrated in the experience of Nadab and Abihu. Then Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, each took his censer and put fire in it, put incense on it, and offered profane fire before Yahweh which he had not commanded them. So fire went out from Yahweh and devoured them, and they died before Yahweh. For flagrantly violating Yahweh's holy law, these priests were killed by fire which came out from Yahweh. Then Moses called Mishael and Elzephan, the sons of Azael, the uncle of Aaron, and said to them, Come near, carry your brethren from before the sanctuary out of the camp. So they went near and carried them by their tunics out of the camp, as Moses had said. Here is a fascinating clue regarding the nature of the eternal flames. These two men, who had been devoured by fire that came out from Yahweh, still had their clothes intact. Yah's fire is not a fire of combustion. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were sentenced to be burned to death for refusing to bow down and worship the idol King Nebuchadnezzar had erected, they were cast into the furnace fully clothed. Then these men were bound and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, 
and Abednego fell down bound into the midst of the burning fire. Something was consumed, the ropes that had bound them. The men themselves were unharmed. Even their clothes were not damaged. The result was not what Nebuchadnezzar expected. The ropes binding these brave heroes of heaven were consumed in a moment, but the men themselves were unharmed. The secret of their deliverance is simple. They were standing in the presence of the Son of Yah. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king? Look, he answered, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the son of Elah. All who surrender to the Father's will and live in harmony with the divine law may stand glorified in the consuming fires of His almighty presence. The three Hebrew worthies walked in obedience to the law of Yahweh. This meant they could live forever in the presence of His perfection, His righteous ardor, with no power to consume them. The doctrine of an eternally burning hell is based on a false premise. Adam and Eve were not given eternal life at creation. Thus, when they sinned, their fate could not be eternal life anywhere. Sin's punishment is a final cessation of life altogether. However, our progenitors had a savior before they needed one. This belief is not based on scripture which states Yahweh only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Yahweh is love. He also delights in justice. Thus says Yahweh, Let him who glories glory in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am Yahweh, exercising loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these I delight. As an Eloah of love and justice, Yahweh does not sentence even the worst sinner to an eternity of agony for the sins committed during a finite period of time on earth. This would be neither love nor just. Eternal life is a gift. It is given only to those who overcome through faith in the merits of Yahushua. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of El is eternal life through Yahushua, the Anointed, our Master. The punishment of those who choose to cling to sin is not eternal life in torment. It is death. Eternal life is granted those only who choose to submit to the divine law of love. Scripture reveals how this is done. Submit yourselves, therefore, to El. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to Yah, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Humble yourselves in the sight of Yahweh, and he shall lift you up. All who allow the eternal fires to consume away their sin and dross during the process of sanctification will be given a life in eternal subjective experience that measures with the life of Yah. These blessed ones live in the presence of the Father 
because while in sinless nature they chose to walk in loving righteousness, their greatest wish has won them eternity. Who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver and purge them as gold and silver. Yahweh awaits the day his image will be perfectly reflected in his children. When this is done, they will hear the voice of Christ calling them home. His gracious invitation is still extended to all who will take heed. Seek ye Yahweh while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto Yahweh and he will have mercy upon him and to our master for he will abundantly pardon. All who submit to the refiner's fire will rejoice eternally in the fires of Yahweh's presence. Surrender to Yahweh today. Let the fires of his presence consume everything that obscures his reflection in your soul. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake and some to everlasting life. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. <laughs>